Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel, The Concepts of ICT. In this lesson, we are going to discuss about the concept called programming. So, programming, it is a very important and very interesting concept. So, before going into the concept of programming, let's first discuss what a program is or we call it a software simply. So what is a software or a program? So we know that we use software or these programs in computers. The computer is a simple machine. So a computer process the data and instructions that we give to that. It doesn't have a brain. It cannot think on its own. So through a program or a software what we do is we give instructions to the computer to do a particular task so a program simply is a set of instructions that we give to the computer to perform a particular task so then programming is the process of writing this software so in programming we give these instructions to the computer using a particular programming language. For that we need to learn some programming language. Before going into writing this code or the software or programs, we should know how to give instructions. We should know how to solve problems because a program simply is a solution for a problem that we face in our day-to-day -day life. So in solving problems we use a set of steps. So when we write these steps in a particular order, in the correct order, the set of steps in the correct order is called an algorithm. That is the first step in writing a software, in programming. We should design the solution for, for the problem that we face in our day to day life. So first step is writing an algorithm. When we learn programming, we use two particular methods to represent algorithms. We call them the graphical representation and the textual representation. The names used for those two types are called the flowchart and pseudomorph. You may be familiar with these two concepts or these two words. Let's learn what are they. So we are going to learn how to write these algorithms. So in this lesson we are going to learn about the flowchart or the graphical representation of an algorithm. So as the flowchart is a graphical representation, we are going to use some symbols in representing these steps. So now I'll show you the symbols used in flowcharts. So this first symbol is used as a terminator or as the start and the end and this symbol is used for processes and this one for inputs and outputs and this symbol here is used for decisions we will discuss about these symbols in detail later for now just remember the symbol for each and these arrows are used for data flows and a simple circle is used as a connector so these are the six basic symbols used to represent algorithms using flowcharts so now we know what an algorithm is and we know the concept of flowchart that it is used as a graphical representation of an algorithm Let's try to write a simple algorithm using flowchart. In writing an algorithm, the first thing that we do is we analyze the problem. What is a problem analysis? In analyzing a problem, what we do is we identify the inputs that we give to the problem in order to solve that. And we identify the outputs that we get from the system or the solution. And we should identify the process that we need to do 
to get the outputs from the inputs we provide. This is what we call the problem analysis. So that part we have to do before doing this algorithm. So let's do a simple example. Uh, let's say that we need to find the addition of two numbers. In that, what are the things that we have to give to solve that problem? So the problem is the addition of two numbers. So get the addition of two numbers, we have to provide those two numbers. So the inputs are the two numbers. Then the output is the action or the sum. So, and again, we have to uh, obtain the process in getting the outputs from the inputs provided. So, what is the process? We simply add them. So, that is the algorithm. First, we get or we give the two numbers to the system and we add them. The second step is we add those two numbers and get the sum of those two. And third step is we give the solution, we output the answer to the user. So those are the three steps in solving this particular problem. So now let's see how we represent that using a flowchart. We should start from the symbol terminator and within that symbol we should put the word start simply to say that it is the beginning. And to show that it is going to the next step, we have to put a data flow or an arrow. So the first step in that algorithm is we have to get two numbers or give two numbers to the system. So here what we represent is what happens inside the software or inside the system. So inside the system, what we do is we get two numbers from the user. So we have to represent that using the symbol. The symbol used for input and output is this one. So we have to rep use that symbol in representing this step. We simply write that we get two numbers as n1 and n2. So the next step is we process them in order to obtain the sum of those two numbers. So the symbol used for process is this one so we use that symbol so we can simply say the sum equals n1 and n1 plus n2 where n1 and n2 are the two numbers that we obtained from the user in the previous step so the next step in the algorithm is displaying addition or the sum so for that also we have to use the symbol that we use for input and output that's it that's the end of the algorithm and we have to end this flowchart using the terminator symbol and we simply put the word end so that is a simple flowchart that we use in representing an algorithm so when we discuss about these algorithms there's another concept called the control structures a control structure simply says what is the next step to be executed in the particular algorithm? The main three control structures used in algorithms are sequence, selection and repetition. Sequence is uh, we start from the beginning and it goes on until the end in the given order. So this example is a simple example for the control structure sequence it starts from the first step and it goes on until the end the next example we are going to use the selection what is a selection simply you select one out of uh, two or more options you have in algorithms also uh, it is not complex as in real world but you, you get two options simply so for selections we are going to use the symbol decision that is why we call it a decision we have to make a decision you have to choose an option so that is a decision that you make and you make the decision based on a given condition
that is what a selection is you decide the next step based on a given condition so let's do an example where you have to display whether the given number is an even or an odd let's try that again you have to start from the terminator oh, let's first try the algorithm so for algorithm we have to first do the analysis so what are the inputs that we have to give in this particular problem what we are going to do is we are going to display whether a given number is odd or even so what is the input so we have to give the number to the system for that to display whether the given the number is odd or even so that is the input the number and the output the output will be whether that given number is odd or even so what is the process then? How do we say that a, a number is odd or even? Simply in mathematics, in deciding whether a given number is odd or even, what we do is we divide that number by 2 and get the remainder uh, by dividing the number by 2. And if the remainder is 1, we call it an odd number. And if the remainder is 0, then it is an even number. So that is the process, that is the algorithm. First we get the number from the user and we divide that number by 2 and get the remainder. And if the remainder is 1, you call it odd. And if it is 0, it is even. That is a simple algorithm. So let's represent that using a flowchart. So the first step is getting a number from the user. You get it as n. You can use whatever the variable that you want. I simply use n. The next step, the process. We divide the number by 2 and get the remainder. So as it is a process, we have to use this symbol. You can write that step simply by like this. Get the remainder by dividing the n, the number n by 2. So in the next step, we are going to check whether the remainder is 0 or 1. There we have to use this symbol, the decision, whether it is 1 or 0. What you have to remember is there's an input to a decision symbol always. Always there's a single input to a decision and there will be two outputs out of the decision symbol. Always remember there should be two outputs. So what you check is, you check whether the remainder is 0 or 1. You don't put all the options inside the decision. What you do is, you, you check a single instance. So you can simply check whether the remainder is 0. So it can be 0 or it cannot. Those are the two options that you get in a decision, in this particular decision this can be yes or no remainder could be zero or not so if it is zero what would you say you say it is an even number so you display that there is an output display even the word even and if it is not, you display odd. And that is the end of that particular algorithm. You can simply end this flowchart. That's how you draw a simple selection in a flowchart. We first, we should design the algorithm using problem analysis and uh, you should figure out the particular order of the steps in solving that problem and you simply draw that using a flowchart. The first step was getting the number, then you have to get the remainder of that number by dividing it by 2 and you check whether the remainder is 0. If it is 0, the output will be simply even and if it is not, the output is odd. That's it. That's how you simply Draw a flowchart. So we discussed two uh, control structures, the sequence and selection. 
in these two examples that we did up to now. And in the next lesson, we are going to discuss about the repetitions as well. It will be a bit complex than this stuff. And uh, we'll discuss in, the, in that part in the next lesson. So in this lesson, we discussed about programming, what a software or a program is. And then we discussed what an algorithm is. And in obtaining an algorithm, we discuss how to obtain the algorithm using problem analysis. And we learned that there are two representations of an algorithm, the graphical and textual. The graphical representation is flowchart and the textual is pseudocode. And uh, we learned the symbols using flowcharts. We started discussing about flowcharts and we learned the symbols used in flowcharts. And we used them in representing simple examples, simple problem solving examples. We discussed about the control structures. Two control structures that we discussed were sequence and selection. And we discussed those using two simple examples. We learned how to represent a sequence and selection using a flowchart. So that is what we are going to learn in this lesson. In the, in the next lesson, we are going to discuss some more examples on flowcharts and hope you enjoyed the lesson, hope you learned everything and if you want to learn more about this concept, the concept of, concepts of ICT, please do subscribe my channel. Thanks for watching. See you on the next lesson. Thank you.